right. Uh, happy Tuesday, everybody. I mean, can't tell from the background. I'm in the country. My last, uh, well, I'll leave tomorrow. But we're trying to do some spring spring stuff around here. And it's cold. That's why I'm wearing, why I'm wearing some fleece. It's actually colder inside than it is outside. Though the uh, I heard the low tonight is going to be 30, 30 degrees. So it'll be cold. It'll be cold everywhere. Uh, hope you can see me, hear me, all that jazz. All right. With a whopping five votes, let's hit this refresh this one last time just to see. Close the voting. We got a magic item. Yep. Closing the poll is closed. Not a particularly, not a particularly uh, close race. If you're wondering what the poll was all about, so this stream, which is I guess the second one, and what I hope to do ongoing for as long as I can manage, is that we can create stuff as a community, stuff we need, stuff we'd like for our games, you know, real practical stuff. So for this, I don't have a, I don't have an agenda in, in, in mind in terms of, oh, I need to have this, I need to have that. So I threw the poll out there and uh, didn't get a ton of response back, but I know it's, it's everyone, everyone interacts in a different way. And I know some, for some folks, like for me, for YouTube, I usually watch YouTube on my TV, so it takes a lot of effort if someone puts something in their community tab on YouTube. I don't usually, will, I won't usually see it because that's not usually how I interface with YouTube. For other folks, you know, don't want to log in to other spots. You know, I get it. I'm going to try to find some tools, but trying to do things kind of on the cheap really means utilizing, utilizing technology and apps and things I already have at my disposal in the forum I already have. And I would like more people to come and hang out and do stuff. So. It's there in the form, but that might change. In any case, we got a magic item. Now the next option, hey, Krister, hey, son of Sofa Man. Now the next, uh, the next thing is, well, we need a magic item or we've decided on a magic item, but what, what kind of magic item? And one of the things I'm gonna have to work out over time is coming up with, to, um, coming up with tools because, I simply don't I don't have uh, I don't have any kind of oracle set up for asking questions like this. I thought I might go to the Tome of Adventure Design if I can find it. Maybe I can open it up and see. Maybe we can roll some dice. Oh, I think this is this is the old one I pulled up. I think yeah. Where's the new one, perchance? Might have to sort that out. Might have to sort that out another time. So what do we got? So you folks who are in the chat, what, what kind of uh, what kind of item? Whoops, what kind of item? What kind of item do we want? Just ask some questions. Maybe I should use a list is better. So maybe the questions we want to ask ourselves is. What form is it? Does it take? Does it take? What function does it have? Who made it? For what purpose was it made? Uh, that's probably some good things to get started. All right, so Krister says, how about an item which incurs some sort of curse over an area? Something that pieces need to remove to save the area. Hmm, it's a good idea. Here's some uh, tea for the working man. Hey, Jason. Something that makes undead spawn generates mists, etc. Okay, well, let's. Whoops. All 
All right. Uh, let's see, what function does it have? Why did I delete that? Huh. Can I expand this now or what? I'm going to have to drag you out so I can mess with you more easily. That's that. Okay, that's what I want to do. All right, so let's see. Something that makes undead spawn generates mists, etc. Uh, oh. Huh. Multerminus says, semi-cursed are their favors, like plus two armor that increases a wandering counter frequency. Well, we'll go with the, uh, well, let's see. Well, semi-cursed is interesting. I just put that over here. So we'll put, maybe it has some benefit also, but it's semi-cursed. And maybe the curse, the curse part, uh, something that spawns undead, generates mists. Well, maybe, so what would the curse be? It, uh, maybe it desecrates the area. So probably we have, I guess if it's semi-curse, it's got to have one, one, uh, one good thing. One, uh, I don't want to say power. And then let's call that, and then we'll have a curse. And so the curse desecrates, desecrates the area. I like that. We'll do something with the mist. Mist is good and add some. I mean, there's visibility issues. It's also just creepy. If you're in, especially if you're in a building or something, and there's mist, or maybe it's uh, maybe it's out outside somewhere. Causes and causes unnatural. Oops. One and unnatural mist. No, it's not. Is it two ends? I thought that's what I had. Okay. Unnatural mist. Maybe the color's weird. Call it, uh, let's see, I don't know, some kind of. Uh, Blue green. All right. So Krista's got some missed notes. We don't know what the power is yet. And then I don't need this anymore. So on the mist, every round, Krister, that seems, is that a lot? Roll a D10. We're going to see how far you can see the mist swirling. I'm wondering if, practically speaking, that's a lot because everybody's rolling extra d10s, and then it might be. I'm wondering if it might be a little bit too. It gets a little too complicated. I like the idea that it. Uh, it hey, squirrel harmon. I like the idea that it affects visibility for sure, but maybe just once per for exploration turn. Roll. What are we saying? So let's, let's see, what's our normal? And here's the other thing which we have to think about. 
what's our normal visit? What do we really think of in terms of visibility? Um, because it, 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 if the, so, so part of my thinking is, is, is this out? I mean, it could be outdoors, could be indoors, right? So if it's indoors, maybe uh, outdoors, it might probably won't be that much missed unless it's super powerful because it's just, you know, winds and things are just going to picking it up and sweeping it away. So indoors, I guess, if indoors. Roll. Oh, uh, what do we think? What's our normal? If line of sight, I guess we think at our max line of sight. I guess we don't really have one, so maybe it's easier just to say what your line of sight is here. So we can roll. And how swingy do we want to get? Hey, Terrence, we haven't missed much. We're uh, we're uh, working on a magic item. The nature, the nature of which we're, we're currently on. We don't know what it looks like yet. I have these questions here I came up with. What forms to take, we don't know yet. We're working on its functions. There's a curse. It has some kind of power. The curse is that it desecrates the area, and then it also causes an unnatural mist. Now, in terms of the mist, it affects visibility, and because it kind of swirls and ebbs and flows, something we're going to do once every 10 minutes or so, but you could probably expand it to once every hour, really depending on how gritty you want to, you know, how detailed and potentially complex you want to get with it. Derp says, have the mist make a layer action? Maybe have a couple of different options, each, in, each, initiative, at, each initiative at 20. Wow. I might say, so what I would say instead, Derp, is if we're going to do something like layer actions, or some equivalent, I would have that to, you know, someone mentioned, who was it mentioned above the null terminated said that it's speaking to them as a kind of a holy symbol, which you could put here in the powers, right? And so maybe that any kind of uh, special powers it would, it would give would be on the person who activates it or otherwise, or does something with it, uh, you know, somehow engages with it. And then they, they we would attach that power to them, which we could put in this powers area, right? So that the person can do things. So for visibility, you know, and I'll say also the powers, the uh whoa, what my I'm you know, I have this keyboard that's not great, not great contrast in the keys and the colors, especially when I don't have a lot of bright light on it, which I don't right now. All right, so apologies for me misspelling and having to kind of come back and correct myself. So wielder can see through the mist. I think that's good. Once per once for expiration turn, if indoors roll, uh, let's call it, uh, gosh, 1d4 times 10 for visibility. Within, I don't know, we'll call it, uh, we can, we'll make it fairly sizable, 300 feet of object. We don't know, we don't have a name yet either. Oh, and I didn't even, uh, I didn't, uh, yeah, what form does it take? Oops. And we also didn't even ask what it's called. What is it called? Oops. Zoop, zoop. What can I undo that? There we go. How did I get that? I want that underneath. Oh, there it goes. Okay. Oh, sorry. Yep. Happy to zoom in. Hopefully that helps. So we got so far, we don't have a name. We don't know what form it takes. Holy symbol. Oh, no, I don't know. I zoomed in here. I can see that I misspelled it. Holy symbol could be in many shapes, right? 
so that's got that power that a, a presumably some sort of cleric or anti-cleric can wield it. And by doing so, they can see through the mist. It desecrates the area. It causes the unnatural mist. We can change this color. I just think it's interesting to give these things colors, maybe even smells. Sure, as always, just let me know. Apologies. A thousand apologies. And then, uh, so the curse desecrates the area, causes the unnatural mist. I suppose, depending on who, who's got a hold of it, it may or may not be a curse. But, you know, it's the, from the player's perspective, from a, from a neutral or good standing party, right, that is a curse. Maybe it has some effect on the wielder also. That could also be a curse. Um, what other powers might it have? What could somebody do with this thing? Terrence asked if this creation is an effect or side effect. Well, it's kind of a, it, it's a, it's, I suppose you could say it's a side effect. It's always on wherever this thing is around. Cause the original concept was that Krista was saying, this is something that affects an area that the party might have to go remove it. From you know some some place or someone, so th that that curse thing is it's always on. It's not that somebody chooses to desecrate; it's just on. Christopher says spawn skeletons. I'm not a huge fan of just like the monster spawning device. I wonder if there's a way. Maybe we can maybe we can write it up in a way that is less. Uh, you know, just to me, and again, this is just a taste thing, right? It's it feels kind of video gamey to me. It's like, oh, this thing, and like, you know, skeletons are. I mean, obviously, in the game, we don't have to, we don't have to show it spawn skeletons. But I, I'd rather give it something, maybe that can work on. You put it in a suitable environment. So, for example, if it's in an area with skeletons, maybe it, maybe it, it. uh Maybe it gathers negative. It it uh, it it attracts negative energy. And that negative energy, we could think about maybe what that does, and maybe that. So you can kind of. I feel like we can kind of get towards a somewhat spawning undead without it being just like. And that are popping out of nothing. But if you were to take this to a graveyard and hang around with it for a while, we can we maybe we can come up with a mechanic of in the presence of the dead. Over over time, you could we could roll some dice, and it will. You know, it will uh, transform X amount of those undead into so many skeletons or zombies or something else. Uh, Christopher says it kills plant life, so bad guys can use it to make crops fail or something. Let's see, Terrence says, maybe it's an explicitly evil slash chaotic for a resurrection item designed to awaken an ancient evil. Like it just, no, Terrence said, like it just casts rays dead on its own. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, the idea would be that maybe we, we could roll a die once per month and any undead with any, any uh, dead, any forms, and we could, maybe you can even roll dice. Either it attracts some kind of formless undead, like a ghost, or in the presence of corpses, or skeletons of some kind, undead will form. So we kind of get to the spawning undead without it being like a spawn box in a video game, if that makes sense. Frederick says an evil cleric, an occultist raises the dead to attack the party. Yeah. So well, there are two. So the two ways to look at it. One, we could make it a power, which means that, which means that, this is something that the anti cleric or the evil cleric will use actively. And then there's the stuff, which I guess we're calling the curse. Maybe I should just call it. Here, I'll do this instead. I'll change these. So it's not really a curse in the sense, I think. No, I want to go. No. Why are you doing that? Why are you doing that? No, not you. You. All right, I want to change that, but it's not letting me go in and change those. Okay. No. Oh, there it is. Here we go. So we'll call this passive. 
passive powers, right? And then we'll call these active powers. Passive powers happening all the time. Active powers are, it takes, you know, a command, uh, an interface, the will of a wielder to do. Son of Silverman wants to call it maybe Mist Caller. At this point, the Mist seems kind of like just the least of its effects, but we can, uh, we'll, we'll put it out there. I'll, uh, I'll just put in, we can take. Let's see what form we can think of the form. So let's see. Um, maybe it's got uh, once per so that the uh, the user can use raised dead once per night. And then we'll make a we'll put a little note here for the negative energy aspect. so I can remember what we we're talking about. Once per month, the object, uh, let's see, in the presence, yeah, sorry, presence of dead, the object, Will channel the negative energy it has absorbed um, an effect. I don't know. I, I'm not going to try to write it in legally. It's right until we raise dead effect as per the spell. I don't have the books in front of me to look up. The light spreader is another option. Though it's not really, oh, I guess we have the, I guess you're looking at the plant thing. I'll, uh, I'll put that under side effect. I'll put that as a name. Um, I feel like the, the theme we're looking at is more undead as opposed to just killing things. All right, you know what? I'll put that in part of the mist. That's a mist effect. Any plants life within about oh, 600 feet withers and dies from exposure to the mist. All right, so we've got, I keep putting my glasses in my mouth. I need to not do that. Mist being a doorway to a darker dimension. That's interesting. I wonder, I wonder, I say with some thunder. Let's see, let me, um, let me see. Where's my, hold on a minute. Let me see, where is DX? I thought I had it here. In the expert stat, that's what I want. Can I open that here? Okay, just wanna look at the, I know I can go to other sources. I'm just using VX because it's easy. I'm wondering if we, so what I'm going to think of is that, all right, clerical spells, cure light wounds, detect evil, detect magic light, protection from evil, purity, purify food and water, remove, 
Uh, I can zoom in on this too. Oh, blank, no trips, no alignment. I, I'm not so I, I'm not saying it has to just no clerical spells. I'm just trying to get some ideas here. So we've got so raise dead is a fifth level spell. So that's that's a serious business. Maybe maybe it's got to be rarer than that. Once per day, once per night, maybe is a lot. Maybe once per some other. Maybe I don't know. We'll see. Um, bum, 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 bum. Okay, and then what do we got under wizard stuff? Where are our, where do we start to get transportation magic? Let's see. Second level, third level, fourth level dimension door. What do they say about Dimension Door? I forgot. These are all in... Uh, yeah, they're not in alphabetical order. They're in... Level order. I pass it? I think I did. Okay. So Dimension Door says the spell will transport the cast of the creature to any place within 360 feet. So I'm going to... We're going to... We're going to add a little quirk here. Any, any teleportation spell, and you know, including dimension door or spell that let's see opens gateways to other locations or planes if. Cast within the mist will open up, will either transport or open up a gateway to. I don't know. What are we? What are we, people are saying? Darker dimension to dimension. I'm just gonna call it. I don't know. To the dark dimension. Whatever it is, we would have to. One would have to. Uh, one would have to flesh out what that means. So instead of giving, because I don't want to, you know, the thing is, like, I mean, look, we could just pile on an endless, endless bunch of powers, but I don't want to get too crazy. It's, this already does a fair amount of stuff, but I like the idea that. If you're in here and you're battling this cleric and things are going poorly, you decide to dimension door, teleport out, or do whatever. And instead of instead of you getting home or wherever you thought you would go, um, oh yeah, the plane. Yeah, I'll put that in there. Yeah, call it the plane of the dead. So the one weird thing is, I don't know. Maybe it has to be somewhere else because I always think of. I don't think that a Hades like God would be down with items that are creating undead i don't i don't think of undead as being a, a thing that is uh a natural partner with the god of the dead because you're kind of robbing them in some ways of some of their you're taking away age eight hades is agency so but we can keep it in there for right now we can switch it up or do something else so we're not giving it so the mist has some really interesting effects Visibility it can go down, potentially be pretty poor. Plant life is going to wither. Though this is more the plant life. It's, I mean, practically speaking, players aren't really going to be aren't going to care, but it's going to certainly be the kind of canary in the coal mine of oh, this thing is here. And then the teleportation spell. It's one of those fun things that you can have this item in a game and it might never come up that the party ends up doing something. But if they do, if they either grabbed it and decide to teleport back home, oh look, we got the thing. Let's teleport back home and then or we got to get out or something like that. It's a really fun moment when it's like, nope, because of that mist, this does not work the way you think it's going to work. And then, you know, chaos ensues. Do we feel like in terms of the powers, I don't know, once per night raised the dead is pretty darn strong. Maybe I'll say once per week. Do we want to give it anything else to do? We go back to the. Where is that? 
go back to our spell list. What other things that might be something kind of lower level? Maybe there's something we can do. So we could take. Whoops. I don't know what happened there, but bloop, bloop. Full moon. Yeah, I wonder. Yeah, let me read the Let's read Ray's Dead. Because one thing I, I try to get a, away from sometimes is, you know, that making it rely on combat, right? So obviously, of course, there are going to be situations in which this cleric could kill somebody and not go into combat. But I don't want to necessarily make it kind of a com necessarily combat oriented. That this is something that they're going to be doing, strike down someone and and raise them. I mean that is cool though. I like it, but I always had that little pause of like, do I want to make it sort of turn the focus to being combat? I like these other things we have because they're not really. They're great atmospheric stuff. They're great prep stuff. But this is not the. Uh, you know, do that sacrifice is, is good. Let's read the Ray De raised dead spell, and then let's see if either we could tweak it or what does it mean. Okay, so raised dead. By means of the spell, the cleric can raise any human, dwarf, halfling, or elf from the dead. So right there, it's humanoid. So we got that covered. And let's see. An eighth level cleric can raise a dead up to four days dead. For each level, the cleric above eighth, four days are added at a time. So basically, the more powerful it is, powerful cleric, the more, the more dead. Something can be. A raised character is one hit point, cannot fight, cast spells, use abilities, carry heavy loads, or move more than half speed. These effects will be healed after two weeks of complete bed rest, and this healing cannot be affected by magic. A raised dead cast against one undead creature will slay it unless it makes its saving throw versus spells. All right, so we actually, we don't really want raised dead. Because I was thinking of raised dead like undead, but the raised dead this is more like a resurrection type deal. The verse of the spell, Finger of Death, creates a death ray that will kill any one creature. There is no effect if the creature makes a saving throw versus death ray. Lawful clerics will only use Finger of Death in life or death situations. So we really don't want raise dead. We really want like a create undead type deal, which I don't know if they have in VX. Yeah, I was with you. You know, I was thinking raise dead, but yeah, it's it's a different different kind of raising. I'm not so I don't have the stuff so in front of mind that I thinking about it what else do we have so where would be the kind of rate do we have a uh da, 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 da. no but we could do um whoops we could do a some kind of rate uh create undead spell Or effect. I mean, it's not even a spell. This is an effect, so we don't even have to to do it. And then we'll just you have the same thing. I don't think I, I'm not sure it actually exists in in the expert set. I'll look for it. maybe it's unless it's under wizard. Okay, we'll start from the top. We've got. Oh, maybe death spell, death spell, da -da. anti magic. Da -da -da. Nope, none of those. Wall of stone, teleport to wings, magic jar. Nope. Oh, there it is. Animate dead. All right, so it's there. Fifth, fifth level magic user spell. So let's see what animate dead does. Let's go down there and read animate dead. Did I pass it already? It's, I, I, I kind of. There it is. All right, this spell allows the caster to make animated skeletons or zombies from normal skeletons or dead bodies within the range. All right, so that, so we use the spell as our reference. Then it already has the built-in stuff of it needs needs to be around. It's not spawning it from thin air. It's spawning it from, it's pulling them into material, if you will. These animated dead will obey the caster until they're destroyed or dispelled by magic, dispelled by a cleric or dispel magic. Okay. What level 
as a, I guess we'll say 12. I like that 12. 12 is a good number. Or should it be something like 7? Mm -hmm. Or maybe we can just give it a, give it a number. We'll call it 2d6. Yeah, we'll say 2d6. So yeah, whoop, I keep going to the wrong page. Okay, yeah, animate that. Abnimate. Animate. Goodness. Animate. All right, then we got over here. We'll switch this up. I keep doing that. Like, I'm like off one letter on my keyboard. Oh, come on. Animate. Okay. For the spell, animates 2d6 HD worth of undead. All right. So we got a couple things. We don't have a name yet. We don't know what form it takes. It's ultimately its function is it's a holy symbol and powerful artifact is a chaos is a well I'll call it a, I suppose an unholy symbol in a sense unholy symbol and powerful Magic, oh goodness, keyboard magic, artifact, alignment, oh come on, where are my glasses, alignment is chaos, where's my, I gotta, hold on, I gotta pull something else out here, no, 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 you guys got any other ideas here, I'm just going to pull out Is that monsters and treasure? Is that right? Is that what I'm trying to do? So I think that's got the. I think that has for magic swords. I think it's in here, and I'll use. We can roll up some stuff, right? Does it have the magic? Yes, it does. Okay, so we'll pull this out. Oh, I didn't know I could do that. Is this going to... Well, this is interesting. It's actually going to put a reader in there? Holy moly. Well, looky there. I didn't know about that. Score. I wish I'd known this before that I could... Uh, embed PDFs in here. Son of a McGunna nun. All right, can I, this, but this reader, oh, I can zoom in. Oh my gosh, Garshk. So very convenient, though I really just wanted, scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. I really want to keep going. Here we go. Into the treasure types. All right. So we don't know the form yet. I'm not going to use this to do the form. But I'm thinking it's will. So it's got a chaos alignment. I want to use. All right. So we got that. So it's chaotic. Here we go. So we're going to roll. I Should we set as intelligence or pick? Because one of the things I like, I, I, 
I think, especially with the idea that just sitting in a place, even if nobody's wielding it, it might just create undead, is that it's got its intelligence. And so it can, if nobody's around, it will it will command its own undead. It will do the thing it needs doing. It's not afraid to get its own non-hands dirty. In terms of what we know it's got active powers between the active and the passive powers well holy symbol is not really a i wouldn't call that a power uh like definitely once this it's got one power animate dead two powers desecrates the enemy third the mist four tracks the negative energy so it's got at least four powers which means it's got to have at least 10. what's the what do they have as extraordinary abilities Flying, healing. I'm going to say it's intelligence 12. What are we thinking? It doesn't have to be brilliant to be vicious. No, but the more powers it has, Terrence, in this system, in this system we're using here, is, uh, is it, 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 the more powers, because this way, so we're, we're kind of backfilling it, right? So if you were doing this for a magic sword, which this is intended, you would roll its intelligence and then figure out how many powers it has from there. We're doing a little bit backwards. We have we have discerned it has three or four powers, and now we're backfilling what that would mean in terms of intelligence. So you're right in that it doesn't, doesn't have to be smart to be vicious. But in this case, it kind of has to be the way the, the at least the per the white box, it's kind of got to be smart to be powerful. Intelligence 12, which makes it something that's uh you don't necessarily want to mess with. Hey, Phil, how's it going? And now, so we've got a couple of things. Whoops, didn't mean to move that. Whoa, I didn't mean to do that either. That's the one thing we have scroll bars within scroll bars. It's hard to. Okay, so we pretty much already have its. Let's see how many languages it speaks. Or should we give it? I think I'm just going to go ahead and give it. Uh, I'm going to say telepathy. It's got telepathy. And then we can, whoops. Telepathy. Telepathy. And then we can speak. Well, we can roll to see. Oh, stop doing that, please. We can roll to see how many languages it speaks. Where is my... Where's the Dice Maiden? All right. You can't see Dice Maiden, but I'm rolling it right now, and I need to roll a D100. We have 33. One language. One language. What kind of what's a what would what what what's a good what's a good language? I mean, I suppose common. We're just I mean, you know, that we're keeping it very generic, right? I would and I would encourage you if you're taking this to use in your own game, you know. Don't use you know common only unless you, unless you want to. There's something like if we had a language of the dead, I would say, oh, it speaks the language of the dead. I mean, I, I suppose we could still give it that. Sure, I'm going to call it language of the dead, or maybe undead. Negative, negative abyssal. <laughs> Terrence says you hear a darkly ominous chuckle in your mind. Why a chuckle? <laughs> Why is it chuckling? Is this a situation where it's in the next room and the party's fumbling trying to get the door, figure out what to do with the door, and and it's they're failing their uh, breakdown doors checks and they're just they're just rolling terribly and so it's it's chuckling at them from the from the next room. 
Okay, so back to this is there anything else we want to be we got that here we go egoism so i'll put that under into i gotta stop putting my glasses in my mouth all right ego ism okay so the white box is talking about intelligent magical swords but i like to use these for magical items of all kinds so I'm going to read these, but we're going to swap out sword for this thing or for just any item in general. Uh, only something with intelligence of seven or more will have an egoism rating. Egoism ranges from one to 12. The higher the number, the greater the ego of the item. The egoism of the item will cause it to do the following. L lead its user past better items. Lead its user into great danger in order to, well, I guess this one's particular for swords, but basically you want to lead it, potentially lead its lead its user into great danger in order to exalt in whatever its function is so for this if this item had a high egoism it might want to lead the cleric to where a bunch of dead bodies are so that it can do its thing that would be the equivalent here um, allow the, itself to be captured by the highest level creature or character which is closer to its station so this thing is maybe it was originally a very powerful cleric's item so it's going to want to get back to a very powerful cleric and it's not going to be satisfied if your first level cleric has it require a share of captured treasure be given to it in the form of better stuff interesting so maybe in this so it's talking about swords talking about wanting a better scabbard or some magical devices to guard it in this case maybe you'd think of a case something you carry it in uh the, the box that it goes in all this stuff obviously the magical devices and things would would be things that it would want also Whenever any situation arises where any of the above possibilities exist, the egoism of the item comes into play. It is always exerted in its relationship with its user, although the true rapport may although true rapport may be gained if the alignment and aims of the character or user coincide with the origin or purpose of the item. The determination of each of these factors is as follows. Okay, so I'm not going to get go really go too far in the mechanics here, but it's just you know, kind of what happens with the, um, what happens in different situations with egoism. So what are its purposes? So we think of the purpose of the item, which I think I have as my, as, is I thought I had it. Yeah. For what purpose? Nope. Oops. Sorry. Oh. Or what its purpose was it made? And I, I think it's to, to raise undead. Raise undead. Here we go. I'll put this in here. And blight the living insert cackling sounds at the end of that and then do we have anything else no we don't okay so we don't but didn't how do we calculate the egoism is there a table here or what did i miss that Oh, so I guess we can just roll 2d6 or 1 to 12. So I guess it's a 1d12. So basically, when you're, when you're, I, the, the idea here is you're supposed to add the intelligence and the egoism together. And this is what's kind of in these little sub paragraphs here talking about what happens, what happens when the, uh, the item wants to, wants to uh, push its own agenda when there's a, some kind of potential conflict. I guess I'll just roll a d12 and we'll take that as the egoism. I'm not going to think too much of it at the moment. Four. Okay. What other ideas do we have about this? Speak to me. Speak. I'm just 
gonna do some formatting here. So this is a powerful item, but it's not without its cost, as even a reasonably powerful creature could end up being controlled by it rather than doing the controlling. Oh, so okay. We we still need so the couple things we do need. I like that kind of backstory. I don't think I had an origin, or did I? I think I had. Well, I kind of had who made it. This, um, this, and go in the garbage. So the object's original owner, owner's soul, was imprisoned within the object after, after they, after they last fiend against their god. So we still don't know, we still don't have who made it. Oops. No, who made it, but we'll put this in there also. So this, yep. Okay. Well, what is it? We gotta think of what's, uh, what what form? What does this holy symbol look like, or unholy symbol look like? What 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 is it? Uh, what's the shape of it? I mean, what's its physical? We need some physical characteristics. What does it look like? What is it? What's it smell like? What does it sound like? How does it taste? All right. Originally created by a by cleric of an of a we'll call it a cult of undeath worship Terence likes the idea the spirit within the item has a hard numeric goal of undead to create to release itself. I don't know if a hard numeric goal, but maybe it's just it has to keep doing it. It would be weird if it's like, oh, I did 666 and now I get out. <laughs> Taste charcoalberry fin. I don't even know what that is. That's is that is that a breakfast cereal for monsters? Part of a what was it? Part of a, a, a balanced breakfast. Charcoalberry Finn flavored. It's the newest flavor coming to Lucky Charms. Charcoalberry Finn. All right, we we need it. We need to know what it looks like. I mean, there's you know a cross. Nah. Uh, there's kind of onk like things, which is kind of a cross still. Nah. Uh, what are some symbols of death? Where? What are our what kind of symbols of death? Do we have? All right, I'm going to put this, pop this out. It's a Kool-Aid flavor. It sounds, I guess, I don't doubt it. All right, so I don't want something super obvious. I kind of like maybe like a life symbol that's upside down or inverted somehow. Okay, maybe we'll, maybe we'll do life in art. Yeah, the tree of life. Yeah, Ankh, got it. I'd love to see something that we could kind of reverse in a way. But these don't look super reversible. I mean, reverse in a way where it's not like, oh, it's an Ankh upside down. 
Um, probably need to play around with some of these. Something. Skeletal arm. Oh, no term is said. Skeletal arm in the hand of a man wired together with lead. Okay. All right. Let's see if I can find a picture just to put in here until I can generate something. Abin. Abd. And. Oh, God. This, this keyboard. Okay. Do this. Okay, let's see. What did the uh... or play on the trope of inversion? Have it as a huge, a large old key used as a lock. Oh, that's interesting too. Well, we can look at both of them, but I'll, 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 I'll take your. Skeletal arm and hand uh, wired together with lead. The golden dove that seeps blood from the eyes. <laughs> Terrence. Whoa. Tom Silverman says I have mid journey generate an image for an inverted symbol of death. That's true. I could do that. I can't. Uh, I'll see. I'll, I'll put one in real quick in mid journey, and if something good comes out, I'll drop it. Uh, let's see. I'll just let me just. Uh... All right. So we're talking about hey mid journey. Imagine a an inverted. I don't think this is going to come out. But I just, I feel like the, uh, you always got to massage these prompts. And I feel like I'm going to get stuff like a black and white image that's been. Let me just, let me try something here. A holy symbol. Made of an arm, bone, and uh, a a skeletal arm and hand wired with lead, inverted symbol. Of life. We'll see what it comes up with. If I guess I'm good. I will. Uh... Oh, I typed something in wrong. Oh, yeah, I did. My bad. Hold on a minute. Redo. I need to redo. No, 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 no. Adisamisa. Okay, we'll see what happens with that. If I get something good in the next minute or so. What else have we got? Okay, what else do we have left? So we need a name still. Miss Caller, Blight Spreader. So far we've got this. I'll see if Mid Journey gives anything better or different. Uh, we got the functions. It's, it's an unholy symbol. And powerful magic artifact. It's, it's, it has a chaos alignment. Its intelligence is 12, which is, means it's very intelligent. It's got an egoism of four, which is a uh, middle of the road, a little bit less than the middle of the road. So it's it's able to work with others. It has telepathy and it speaks the language of the undead. Actively, it's a holy symbol. If you know, obviously, if used by a, a cleric, the wielder can see through the mists that it creates through its passive powers. And then once per week, they can animate dead. 
And then passively, it's going to desecrate the area that it's in, causes, causes the unnatural mist, and attracts negative energy. And we have some notes on the negative energy that once per month, it's going to just on its own, it's going to cast an animate dead spell as per the, as the animate, dead spe, animate dead effect as per the spell. And then when you do that, you're going to roll 2d6 to see how many hit dice of undead are made. And then the mist, if you're in the mist and you're not the holder of the item, then your visibility is going to be 1d4 times 10, and you roll once per exploration turn to see because all the swirling and comings and goings of the mist. Any plant life within 600 feet is going to wither and die from exposure. And then if you cast, you're unlucky enough to cast a teleportation type spell, including like Dimension Door or any kind of gate type spell. Instead, you're going to be taken, and we could probably change this to the negative energy plane, maybe is a better. So negative energy plane. So you're going to get hijacked going over there. And then who made it? It was originally created by a high cleric of a cult of undeath worship and then the backstory was the object's original owner's soul was imprisoned within the object after they blasphemed against their god and then it was the purpose it was made for which it is striving to complete is to raise undead and blight the living son of sylvan man says we need new names well i'm all ears so let's have it let me check on mid journey to see if i got anything interesting Uh, I got a few. I got, well, let's see. Did that work? Oh, that didn't work. Hold on a minute. And let me paste. I did. So here's what Mid Journey came up with. And I, I can, uh, any of those? Ink Pen says, "Why not teleport them to insert undeath deities plane?" I mean, you can. I, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm so we're being very generic at this point, so I don't know what an undeath deities plane is, but just in my mind, I connect undeath with negative energy, so the negative energy plane is would be the deity of undeath's plane. But if they have their own domain residence somewhere, yeah, you should insert insert that instead but just because i'm being very generic and i'm not trying to create at least not today a god and everything else on top of everything uh i'm just using negative energy plane as a stand-in but absolutely put in your uh put in your plane of choice Pen, right you you would take this and, and do with it what you will now in, in terms of if this were going to put this into a, some kind of book or something then i would probably you know there would be setting information attached to it but for just for today since we're just working on the item i'm not trying to get into the weeds on things you know because we could endlessly get in the weeds and all kinds of stuff but for now we'll do this all right so what are folks liking the uh which one do people like The left hand of darkness. Ooh, I like that. Would that mean that we would do this one? Because it's a left hand, or do we still like the two hands? Which one of these? I'll generate a couple more. Because why not? Actually, hold on a second. Let me just see something first. Uh, I'm on the lakes. Okay. So, yeah, let's. All right, I'm having mid journey do another couple. I suppose. What are some other holy symbols? Now let's look at Catholic. They got lots of holy symbols, don't they? Oh, I might. Maybe I should. Maybe I want. Um. Oh, maybe, so there's the idea of the key. I was thinking more physical things, not this kind of thing. I was hoping more for. 
Uh, what would be? I don't know if this will get me anything. I don't think this is getting me anywhere that I want to go. I have to figure out what they're things that are called. I mean, like, you know, if they had like uh, scepters and things like that, they're all pretty neat. Two hands win between the two picks. Well, I actually had more than two picks. There's actually four here, but so we're 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 getting we're not dealing with the skeleton heads. Only the two hands. I got one more set from Mid Journey. Oh, these are all one handers. All right, so before we make a, I mean, not even really truly final, but just a, and here's the second. So let me put these next to each other. Okay, so we still like this one the best, or one of these newcomers went out. I do like some of these extra detail on some of these. That one's really creepy. Uh, talisman. Oh, I see. In the prompt, you mean? Uh, I could try one more set. I wonder if talisman gets you more jewelry types. Although that's not bad. You know, do we see it as more of something that the guy's waving around? Or something that he's just kind of got around his neck? But I'll, I'll try Talisman, and we'll get one last set in here. This one, I like that it's complete. I mean, this is, this is nice and complete, too. So it's only got three fingers and the thumb, which is kind of creepy, interesting. A miter. Also good. Oh, this one shows the bottom, too. Let's see. The journey is working. Mid journey, waiting on mid journey. Any last things here? What do we like about that? We like that left hand of darkness for the name. Does anybody else have names they like, like better, or just other ideas to throw into the mix? Oh, let's see, top right. Bottom left, old bottom left, top left, bottom right. Okay, I kind of like. I mean, this one's kind of cool, and it's got that left hand, right? That's your left hand. I do like the the, the one with the two hands is kind of cool, though. It, it's weird, but weird I think is is good. I don't know. They all they all have. I feel like they. I could all, I could I could sell myself on just about all of them. Parents likes his evil hats. Let's see. Oh, wait. No, we're still waiting on mid-journey for our last set. So, so I like the idea of using the name to subvert expectations, perhaps take it even a step further and have the name unrelated to the item at all, like Hands of Providence or something like that. I, I think maybe, so I think there'd probably be a couple of names, right? Because I could see, so the, so here we have to, I don't want to say, I don't want to say be careful, but we have a couple of things, right? So I doubt in the lore that the original owner called it the hands of providence if they didn't mean it that way now for them providence you can get into some fun of well for them providence means something else like maybe the way to think about it is say well what would be good what, what's a neutral kind of word that we can look at and say uh like destiny would be one right the left hand of destiny You're like ooh, what's that well the original user was thought uh, believed that the destiny of the world was to be embroiled in undeath and, and someone else might think very differently of it. But, un, you know, unless it's something that someone is deliberately in time through the ages decided to, and, and it could be decided to, ooh, I got to rehabilitate the name for some reason, then maybe they would. But I don't know they would just take on a name opposite to itself. But we could think about, like, what would the person who made it, because, you know, Left Hand of Darkness is cool, but it it, it it's highlighting the, the sort of danger, terror, of the thing, right? It's evilness. But maybe what would somebody call it if they didn't think that that was evil? They might not call it the left hand of darkness if they are like, 
but the darkness to them isn't dark. Like it's dark to us, not dark to them. Maybe, you know, something like the left hand of, uh, I don't know. I'm not sure what it would be, but I, I think that might be a good way to look at it. But I don't, I don't know that someone just make like a tricksy name, like, haha, like the Cape of Good Hope kind of thing, like to try to trick people to get it. Because remember, this thing could just generate undead from wherever it is. And it's fairly powerful. So I think that people would be trying to, I mean, if you're an evil cleric and you know those things out there, you'd probably be trying to get a hold of it. So I don't know if in the sense of it's kind of trying to, and, that, and how would it trick people to it? I'm not sure. So I don't know if that it would kind of try to, it, it would, tr it or somebody would try to change the name specifically, but I could see it being that it sounds good to them and it can sound good to somebody else. But then when you get the context, you're like, oh, they meant this, you know, in a bad, bad way. Yes, left handed path is definitely a nickname for evil magic. Yeah, like uh, sinister, right? Sinister, left handed. Oh, those. Okay, so here's our last two. This is, well, one of them's kind of cool because it's a little bit more abstracted. All right, these will be the last ones. I know we're over time. We're in overtime. Oops. All right. Okay, well, you're going to set... So this one's kind of neat only because it's, an, I, I, the thing I like about that, this one is just that I like that they abstracted it for whatever reason. This one came up with the, it's kind of a hand, but it's not literally a hand. And and that's kind of interesting. I don't know where it got the ball thing from. I'm curious to see what kind of, what it's, what it was, uh, it's references is playing off a talisman. This one's super creepy with the skull kind of in the hand. It's got the left hand again. I didn't tell it left hand. It's doing left hand. It seems to be emphasizing the left hand all on its own. So, so it's rule number 104, naming things is difficult. I like the idea of keeping the left hand. So maybe we just got to think of the left hand of what? I mean, I like left hand of darkness, but if we want to think of something that's, you know, in a, in a sense, tricky or something that maybe we could play with having the double, double meanings, then maybe a... Uh, Is there something here? Oh, there is something here, and I didn't mean it to be. Out. Top right. Yeah, that one does have some cool stuff. It's definitely, I like it. I like it in terms of, you can see, and it looks like they almost made it bronze or something. It's, or, it's cool. And it's got the skull, it's got this funky stuff. Then this one still is cool. I don't know, there's a lot, there's a lot of neat stuff. I, I, this is one of those things that the fun things with generators like this is that you could sit there and get a bunch of images and you're gonna get a bunch of stuff that's really cool and then it's almost hard to just pick one. Because they've all got some neat stuff. Neat elements. All right. Well, we are past the hour. We're actually fairly well past the hour. I'll play around with this some more. I'll post the stuff. I'll post what we have so far in, in uh, the forums. So go to forums.hex.press. And in this, I do a topic for every stream. In this stream topic, I will post these images. I will post what we uh, came up with. And then uh, we can continue discussing and potentially workshopping these things a bit. Oh, Starkey. Ah, cool. Like Starkey. Starkey's machine. No, I know that's our Starkey and Hutch. I like it, Inkpen. But yeah, I definitely, if I had a name that was two words put together like that, I would totally, I would totally be trying to fit that in all kinds of things. All right, folks. Well, this was good. This was good. We don't have the name yet, but we will we'll continue working on it. But I like what we've got. And uh, next week, so I'll put the, uh, I'll, I will put the poll up for next week, either this afternoon or tomorrow. So stay tuned for that. If you have a chance, come over to the forums. Yes, you have to make an account. I apologize for that. But then you'll get to interact with everything anyway, which we're doing. And then you can vote on next week's. 
And it would be cool if maybe at some point we could circle back to some of these and then look at things like, well, what DD did this, you know, what was the cult, right? Maybe next time we say, oh, we'll work on a cult and we can tie it in so that we can start of sort of putting together a web of these different things that we're doing. Well, Terminus says, I really need to figure out what's keeping me from getting my forgotten password emails on the forum so I can finally log in. Um, I will, I will, uh, I'm not sure. I will look at it offline or when I get offline, no terminate or something I can trigger from my end. I will try to trigger it. Anyway, apart from that, uh, have a great rest of your day or night when you're, whenever you end up watching or listening to this, if you can give a thumbs up on your way out, that'd be awesome. If you found yourself in here and you're not subscribed, if you feel like subscribing, that would also be awesome. Other than that, have a great rest of your whenever. Game on, and I will talk to you later. Bye, everybody.